Hello, I'm David Kroll from Mortgage Network, and welcome to Money Matters. Uh, my segment uh, today is going to be on credit, and I'm going to explain in the next uh, uh, segment of the show all sorts of uh, uh, absolutely fascinating things that you've always wanted to know about credit. Actually, it does impact your life every single day uh, in many ways, so it is quite an interesting topic. First of all, uh, uh, credit as we know it in our very computer data-driven age is a number. Uh, it's a number that's the result of an algorithm, and that algorithm uh, contains the, the personal uh, spending habits and payment habits of 200 million people. So th these databases, these credit-based databases are enormous, absolutely enormous. All of the spending habits of 200 million people are contained within uh, these databases. What super, super uh, clever computer programmers do is to develop a algorithm that uh, makes an effort to forecast future behavior based upon past behavior. Not of the individual consumer, but of this broad base of consumers analyzed every single way possible. So uh, to give you an example, the algorithm has uh, literally thousands of aspects to it. Uh, out, the, out the end pops a credit rating. Uh, in, in the mortgage world, the, the, the so-called FICO algorithm uh, uh, has a tippy-top score of 850 is the highest possible score that you can get. And you can get other scores all the way down to 350. Uh, the higher the score, uh, the better the mortgage rate, uh, the more likely you are to be uh, approved for a mortgage and so forth. Uh, Going into the, uh, into the content of the credit score uh, is every bit of be credit-related behavior that's been reported on you since you became an adult. Uh, and the key, the key point here is th that has been reported on you. So uh, contained in the vast computer database is all the information about student loans, all the information about your earliest uh, uh, credit cards when you were in college, uh, your earliest relationships with uh, uh, cable providers, and uh, um, uh, your uh, earliest uh, rental experiences, your earliest electricity accounts from college, uh, all the way up through uh, your mortgages and your cars and your uh, uh, credit cards later in life to the very end of your days. We've got all the information from the earliest electricity account that you shared in, in high school and in college with uh, three roommates all the way through to 50 or 60 or 70 years later, um, your electrical account today. Uh, when you put all of this together, uh, there are three big companies in the United States, the, the three principal companies in the United States that have all uh, developed the algorithm and share, uh, for the most part, share the same database. Uh, the three big companies, you've heard of them, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Equifax is famous. Uh, because a few months ago, the, uh, the Equifax database was breached and the private credit information, social security numbers, birth dates, addresses, and so forth of some 20 million Americans was spilled uh, uh, into the hands of, uh, of uh, computer hackers. Uh, so that was, a, that was a pretty big spill and uh, a pretty, uh, uh, a uh, pretty enormous event, but that'll that just gives you a gives you a sense that the the very biggest databases that exist uh, 
on the planet are, uh, are examples of those big databases are the, the three databases shared by uh, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Anyway, into the mix, into the algorithm goes all of the information along with the information about everybody else. Um, and out comes some conclusions in the form of credit scores. Each of the three uh, repositories, as they're called, or agencies, as they're called, uh, each of the three issues its own credit score. The credit scores are slightly different because the algorithms are slightly different. So <clears throat> a, a typical example would be uh, maybe uh, Experian at uh, 750 credit score, um, <clears throat> Equifax at 740, and uh, uh, TransUnion at 730. We as the lender will most likely use the middle of the three. Uh, what, <clears throat> what are the highlights? The highlights are that there's a, there's a built-in hierarchy of, of credit references that make a difference. Uh, if you have a mortgage and you've successfully made every mortgage payment, uh, that's the biggest, best piece of credit that can be reported. Having no mortgage at all and never having had a mortgage is actually a negative on your credit report. So having an outstanding mortgage, owing people money as a mortgage, and always making the payment is actually a big plus. Next down is installment loans. Uh, having an automobile loan, or having had in your lifetime a series of automobile loans and having paid those down successfully. Not as important as a mortgage, but very important. Uh, next down on the, the, the rung is, uh, is, ma is credit cards, national credit cards, MasterCards, Visas, uh, Discover Cards, uh, American Express, the big four. Uh, having a couple of those cards, very important, not as important as an automobile loan, and not nearly as important as a mortgage, but still very important to have a couple of those. Uh, and uh, your credit is weaker if you don't have any, stronger if you have them and pay. Now, when you get down to uh, the credit cards, an interesting, uh, an interesting equation occurs. If you've got a credit card with a limit on it of $10,000, a spending limit of $10,000, you never want to let the balance of money that you've actually used on that card go higher than $4,000. Don't let it go higher than 40%. And then pay it down, let it go back up to $4,000, pay it down the next month, let it go up to $4,000, pay it down the next month. But never use that space between $4,000 and $10,000. Uh, that shows the credit algorithm that you're using the revolving credit as it's intended to be used, which is just because it's uh, useful, uh, but not because you absolutely desperately have to have it and that it's your lifeline to get through to the next day. If you have uh, a $10,000 limit and you have used $9,800 worth of credit, then the algorithm predicts that if, the, if you get a flat tire, you're going to have to uh, uh, go late on your credit cards in order to fix the, 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 the flat tire because you have no money. That's the algorithm talking. That you might have uh, two million bucks in the bank, but the algorithm predicts that if you're using 100% of your credit card limit, that you have no credit left in your life and therefore the next emergency could be a disaster. So that's a very, very sort of interesting twist. The, um, there's much, much, much more to tell you about credit. The things to remember are use revolving credit no higher than 40%. If you need more revolving credit, if you can't follow that rule, get another credit card and use them both at 40%. That's the equivalent of having one credit card to the max. 
Uh, and one last little jab, stay away from retail cards, banana republic and so forth. Uh, they're too easy to get screwed up and uh, not particularly useful. Okay, I'm wrapping this up now. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to follow uh, next week with another uh, talk about credit because there's a bunch of more interesting things to say. In the meantime, this is David Kroll from Mortgage Network saying goodbye from Money Matters. See you next time.